And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Ryan Metzler here, and today I'm going to be showing you a deck building game by Cryptozoic Entertainment called Penny Arcade The Game, Gamers vs. Evil, which is a game for two to four players. Uh, it says the suggested playtime is about 30 to 45 minutes, but being a deck building game it could go a little bit longer or a little bit shorter than that. Players are going to be using two different currencies in order to buy cards to add them to their deck in order to try and earn victory points to win the game. Now. Uh, this is the first time I've ever had to do this, but there's a little bit of a disclaimer for this game. The game is not entirely family friendly if you're familiar with Penny Arcade, the comic. Uh, not everything is of a PG or G nature, so uh, if you're at work or you have kids watching with you, there may be some things you don't want them to see in this review. Uh, otherwise, I don't think it's too bad, but let's take a look at it and find out what I'm talking about. So here we are all set up for a game of Penny Arcade, the deck builder game, that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, basically, each game you're going to use a deck of randomizer cards in order to choose 12 different cards to play for the game. You're actually choosing 10 because a couple of them are predetermined. Merch is a predetermined card and Flesh Reaper here is a predetermined card that's in every game. Uh, each player is going to be playing a character in the game. For example, right now I am the Scoutmaster. So, this is my character card, and it's going to tell me exactly what I get. So it says, any time that another player draws a boss loot, I get two cards. So that's important, it's going to be a situation which will give me more cards for the other player doing something good. It also tells me what my starting deck is, which is going to be seven quarters uh, and seven cardboard tubes. And this is going to vary from player to player, depending on which character you get. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these, but essentially, I get a starting deck with seven cardboard tubes and seven quarters. And these are going to basically be my currency for the game. And there are two currencies in Penny Arcade. The first is going to be power. And you'll see here that cardboard tubes provide one power. Also, you can see in the bottom right hand corner is a symbol which shows the cost to buy the card. This is a power symbol and the cost to buy this card is zero power. All red cards will cost power to buy and all green cards will cost quarters to buy. And quarters look like this. They're going to provide you with one token. So they actually don't cost quarters to buy, they cost tokens to buy, but you get the idea. And the cost is going to be in the bottom right hand corner again in tokens. So once you've got your character and everything all set up and you've randomized the cards, you're going to shuffle your deck with your starting cards in it and you're going to draw six each turn. So I'm going to draw six cards and I'm going to look at them and what I have in my hand, there's too many cards first off, uh, but I have five cardboard tubes giving me five power and one quarter giving me one token. And with that I can buy as many cards from this central region as I want. So I have five power and one token. Well one token will buy me nothing. You can see that the cards cost two through six or that there's a boss pile that costs eight and basically this represents fighting that boss and beating it and you'll get a special card for doing so if you manage to get up to eight tokens, but more on that in a little bit. I have five powers, so I could buy one of these cards over here, and all of the cards are going to have different abilities. Uh, and so here comes the not-so-family-friendly part of the game. We have cards like Scrow Tomb uh, here, which basically says that he's going to give you plus one power if you play him from your hand, but if you happen to pair, er, pair together a, a couple Scrow Tombs, if he's not the first Scrow Tomb you play on your turn, you're going to get four power from him. So the first one provides one, but the next one provides four for pairing them up. Haha, ha, very funny. I actually think it's a great joke, but not so family friendly. Uh, you also have things like the Flesh Reaper, which are much more friendly, but still kind of strange, which basically just gives you two power, but at the bottom right hand corner is worth one victory point at the end of the game. On the green side, you're going to have things that generally provide tokens instead of power, but some of them will cross over and provide power. Uh, again, not so family friendly, but we have Touch Wieners. Uh, touch Wieners essentially is a card that you play from your hand. It's going to give you two tokens, and if somebody else decides to play a Touch Wieners with you, you get to draw a card, and so do they. So, you're essentially going to go through, and you're going to spend your money in order to buy cards. So I have five uh, cardboard tubes here, which is my, my form of money for red cards. I could buy this five cost card, Chaos World Smasher, which is going to give me two power and allow me to attack my opponent, forcing them to uh, either 
basically uh, gain a bad card, a minus victory point card called a Pax Pox, or to show one of those from their hand in order to prevent this from happening. When I do this, I'm going to take all of the cards that I got and I'm going to put them into the discard pile along with any cards from my hand that turn, and then I would draw another six cards into my hand getting ready for my next turn. Uh, it, this is going to go on back and forth until a couple of, or one of two victory conditions is met, or one of two end game conditions is met. The first is that either of these boss piles is exhausted. If either of these piles is exhausted, then the game's going to end. Otherwise, the game ends when six of the, the game piles are gone. Any six, including uh, any of the greens, any of the reds, or these two basic card piles under the center of the table, or the Pax Pox. Now, I told you that these boss piles were interesting, and they're perhaps the most unique part of this game. Each of these piles has a cost on it, for example, eight coins here for a jolly old Saint Nicholas, but the piles underneath them are not the same as the top card. They're going to have special abilities. So, for example, we have an eight cost here, and an eight cost would get you this card on top, which is called Slay of Slaying. You can see it here, and it has three abilities. Uh, and you're going to roll a die on your turn when you play this card from your hand, and you're going to get a number. So, for example, I rolled a three. You can't see it on the camera, but I rolled a three. If I had rolled a one, something bad would happen, and each opponent would get to draw one card. Uh, if I roll anything from a two to a 17, he's going to give me four tokens. And if I happen to roll an 18 through a 20, a critical hit, I would get another Jolly Old St. Nicholas card from this pile in order to add to my discard pile. So that's really good. Uh, and you're going to go through, and as you go through, you're going to get these cards, and then you'll come across the next level of them. So when you get the first four cards, he becomes stronger, and he takes ten tokens to buy one of these cards. And then if you go through again, you're going to get to the final card, which costs 13, but if you get it, it's worth seven victory points. So the big bosses are worth a lot of points. And so you're going to go through the game, accumulating cards, adding them to your deck, playing as many cards from your hand as you want each turn in order to try and buy more stuff and get more victory points. Uh, victory points are predominantly on the red cards, but are also on the bosses. Uh, you'll go until you meet one of those two endgame conditions, and then whoever has the most victory points in their deck, after subtracting out Pax Pox, is going to be the winner. So that's Penny Arcade the game, Gamers vs. Evil. Uh, a nice deck builder, one that I find entertaining. It's definitely the funniest deck builder out there. Um, it provides humor. It doesn't provide a ton of new stuff aside from having two currencies that you're trying to balance between it and the little bit of randomness in the boss loot cards that you can get adding to your deck and giving you that die roll which can really cause a huge swing in points if you get a great roll or a really terrible roll you can give your opponents a great benefit or get a great benefit for yourself uh, in order to kind of swing the game. Uh, it plays quickly enough, it has enough choices and enough random cards that you're not going to get bored of it and if you are uh, maybe somewhat easily amused by, by crude jokes, you're going to enjoy it all that much more. So I'd say that this is a very interesting game for the fans of the Penny Arcade comic, or for deck building fans in general, and perhaps one that you might want to check out uh, if you're not averse to a little bit more crude humor in your games. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.